になると思います。The keyword that one of the keywords that I put in the pamphlet、uh, that that's included with the deck for the Empress is matter. So as the creator,、um, as the mother figure,、um, the the mother actually puts things into matter.、Um, Creates matter.、Um, that merging of opposites becomes、uh, something tangible. Moving from that voidness, that that mystery of the、um, the high priestess, that mystery then becomes reality in the empress.、Um, and so there's also that idea that、uh, that that's kind of why the threes. Have movement in them because where the twos express kind of a tension between dualities, between opposites, we're looking at one end of the spectrum and we're looking at the other end of the spectrum, and they seem they're they're diametrically opposed, and there's a tension between them, and there can be、um, a lack of movement sometimes in that opposition, especially if they're equally balanced opposites. And then, though, if we look at the in between, at the space between the opposites, that third aspect, then we have movement because the entire space between two opposites is a continuum, and it's in constant movement, and and there's there's nothing absolute about it, and it's、um, the the that space in between is neither. This nor that, but it's elements of both. It's combination of both, and so that's what we get in the Empress, and and the result of the Empress, which is the child, and in this case,、um, depicted as a, a sphere of Earth,、um, which kind of links the Empress and and the child hinted at in the Empress to the pages in the Orbifold,、uh, pages in general. Uh, are usually considered Earth. Not all systems recognize pages as Earth.、Um, sometimes they recognize pages as actually air, which makes a good bit of sense too.、Uh, but in this case,、uh, we have pages as Earth, and so it's that creation of action and feeling that puts things into matter. It puts. Makes the child, the the result, the creation,、um, something of earth, something tangible, a page, and so even though、uh, in the courts I don't see the courts as having ranks or ages,、um, so pages aren't necessarily the youngest of the courts in the orbifold, although pages are considered the youngest in other、um, systems. You can see them still as the youngest. You can see them as the child or the result of. Creation, and yet we're all children. We're all the result of creation. Even if you're a hundred years old, you are the child of your parents. So,、um, being a, a a child or the result of the the combination of opposites, being a third thing,、um, being this this earth sphere, doesn't necessarily depict youth or Uh, the child in the sense of age, but the child in sense of relationship with other things, and we're all children not only of our parents, but we're the children of our environments. We're the combination. We're the filter of all things in our environments.、Um, well, I, I won't go so much into that, but that that idea is there. That idea is in this symbology.、Um, I also found it kind of interesting later when I was.、Um, Looking at cards after creating the the deck, that、uh, in the Toth Tarot, the primary colors are、um, red, blue, and green. And so、uh, the Crowley Harris deck expresses that same kind of、um, feeling that's expressed in color, even without necessarily co-、um, associating color with element. Although I'm sure they did. Um, but just that automatic association that we make with colors, that、um, red, blue, and green are so primary 
uh, to existence and so primary to um, the ideas of creation um, that they were included in, in the Crowley-Harris um, depiction of the Empress. And it's no small reason why those three colors are considered primary. They're actually the primary colors of light. So usually when we think of primary colors, the three primaries, we're thinking of blue, red, and yellow. Um, but that's in additive color theory. It's actually cyan, magenta, and yellow. Um, so the printing process, CMYK colors in your, in your printer or when you go to a, a, a printer's, they're usually working in CMYK. Sometimes they have other inks to get more truer colors, but the basis of additive color theory is uh, cyan or, or blue, uh, magenta or pink, red, uh, and yellow. And when we combine those three colors, we get all the other colors um, when we're combining pigments. When we're working not with pigment, pigments, so not paint, not inks, um, not, not the whole blue and, blue and yellow create green idea when we're adding colors to each other, but instead when we're working with subtractive color theory, that's when we're working with light. And so the way that your TV works, the way that your computer works, the way that your iPhone works, maybe not iPhone, maybe it's an Android or something else, but the way your phone works, um, the way the screens, the displays on those work is through subtractive color theory, through the primary colors of light. The primary colors of light are red, blue, a dark, a fairly dark blue actually, uh, and green. And so when you shine actually a red and blue light on each other, you get magenta. When you shine a blue and green light on each other, you get cyan, so a light colored blue. And when you shine green and red on uh, together, um, they actually combine to create yellow. So in a sense, um, if we take that one step further and apply it to the orbifold and, and the associations of color with aspects of ourselves in, in the orbifold, the combination of green and red, earth and fire, creates mind, creates intellect. So being plus action creates intel intellect or wisdom. So there's there at the mental realm, it, even though it's the most subtle, its root is or can be, as the as the element matures, its root is in earth and fire. Um, so. And then the, the other really cool thing about additive color, uh, sorry, subtractive color with light is that if you shine all three primaries on each other, uh, you get white light. And that's why they're considered primaries because um, any other two combinations of light uh, don't combine to make white light, pure white light. You need three colors. You need the red, the blue, and the green to shine together to make pure white light. You can have other colors of light shining on each other to get other, other interesting things, and that's, that's the way we perceive um, objects as light bounces off of them and combines in our, in our eyes and in our mind. But we need those three primary colors, and so they combine to white light. In the same way, they scatter from white light, they scatter into at least the three primaries, uh, and then, of course, the others. So that again is kind of getting into the manifestation card, uh, the void and the manifestation card. So those two cards, even though I've kind of added them uh, into the deck, I've broken, I'm not I'm certainly not the first to do extra cards. Um, it, it's a common trend now. Um, but even though I've broken this, the traditional 78 card system, um, there, is, there is reason for it and it, it does show itself over and over and over again. Um, anyway, I, I won't get into, into that any more than I already have. <laughs> um, so creation, matter, creation, combination of opposites, the process of moving from opposite to opposite, the movement between opposites, um, that is threeness and the creation of, 
uh, matter. From the creation of matter, from nurturing, from motherliness, from femininity, uh, we get the masculine, the, the emperor, the pattern. So pattern is the opposing keyword um, to matter, and that may not be immediately evident, uh, except uh, those of you who kind of are into language and linguistics. Matter has the root of ma. Pattern has the root syllable pa. So ma and pa, ma mother and pa father. Matter is the mother, pattern is the father, paternity. Where the mother is more nurturing uh, and, and is concerned with the development of things, with the development and creation of matter, the father, the, the, the pattern, is more concerned with creating structure, and in creating structure, protecting the shape, creating boundaries. So that's very much the four, too, is the four creates a boundary um, and creates structure, and in that boundary and structure creates protection. And protection is necessary. So we have, uh, and that's that's also the home. So I think of, I think of this card um, as the home, uh, the, the, the home that uh, is built to protect. So we have the four walls, they're made of earth, they're very stable, they're, they're very firm, and they're very protective. They can be restrictive if, uh, if we've grown too far uh, beyond those walls, but at the same time, the protective walls are kind of necessary for our uh, our development, our nurturing. Um, so that's where the the matter and patter, the emperor and the empress, um, co co join um, in 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 nourishment and protection uh, in the development of the child or the development of a thing, the development of an idea. They work together. So these four protective walls of earth surround a spark, an ember of fire. Um, so that's the warmth, that's the hearth, that's the warmth within the home. So one of the reasons that we have a home, that we need protection, is not just protection from the elements, but shielding us from cold and keeping us warm, physically and spiritually, emotionally. And that warmth needs to be kind of tended and protected and nourished if the structure of the home is too oppressive, is too stringent, is too stable, then it can quash that inner hearth. It can make the, the heat inside um, the home and the warmth of the home, um, it, 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 can, it can destroy it. Um, it can snuff it out. But at the same time, the four walls, that protection, um, helps allow that ember to grow and to burn more brightly. It's also the fuel. The earth is also the fuel for fire, for, for that ember to gradually build in heat and warmth and, and, and start to be more and more active. Um, so we have that child that started as earth in the empress and that child then as it's as it's being structured by the emperor is also learning how to um how to exist how to do things in the world how to go out and and be active um but within some protection so the emperor has that protection uh i think oh yes um and then we also have, uh, in the visual symbology, uh, there's a hint at Aries. I know it's a fairly simple uh, way. You have to be a little bit creative to see it, but it's also the fire on the top that crowns um, the emperor. 
But the Emperor is traditionally not seen as an Earth card. It's seen as a fire card because it's, it's ruled by Aries. Again, astrology is not my strong suit, but again, um, I'm <laughs> I see it enough that it that it uh, it sinks in at some level, even if I'm not specifically studying for the astrology. It's around enough, um, but I also see the emperor as an earth card. So it's emperor is actually a combination of earth and fire. But the earth is the the fire is certainly there. It's ruled by fire on the top, and there's almost an image of a ram. Here's the uh, horns, and here's the snout. Um, in, in the emperor. So this, the symbols are there that you, you might have to struggle a little bit at first to see them, but they're certainly there. They open up in the mind. 